All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, appreciate everybody for coming. Um, what I'd say is this shows, because we're, we're packed compared to normal, this shows that every organization and, and, and our clients are impacted by identification. It's a really important topic. Um, so I'm excited to be able to open th that up today. Um, we're going to uh, we're gonna have uh, <coughs> Carrie Williams, Assistant Director of Reentry for ACC. So she's going to speak briefly, 10, 15 minutes, about the things that they're working on to get implemented or things that are already in place. Um, and then we're going to just, from then, just open up to a discussion to understand, um, you know, how this impact in organizations and our clients and what could we do better and potentially be a part of creating a process um, that might be uh, more efficient, because if we're all doing it the same way, um, then the message will get across to Northwest Arkansas on how to uh, best um, acquire identification or, or get it prior to release. So, uh, turn it over to Okay, well, good uh, morning. Uh, morning. Thank you all for being here. I have a PowerPoint, but if I've only got like 15 minutes, and you can ask Jonathan, he was at a transitional housing director's meeting yesterday going over our new uh, housing policy. And we talked for about an hour, and I think a lot of it was on identification. So this discussion could go on well beyond the amount of time that we have. So I can kind of go through this a little bit to show you guys what we train and how we get to the process of identifying a suspension, the courts. Um, this is not my PowerPoint. Uh, I borrowed this from the lady that actually takes care of the export and import files from the DMV. So if you want me to go through this, does everybody know who I am? I, Jim did really good on my bio, so. <laughs> um, I'll start going through this a little bit. It talks about an eligible inmate. Act 895 of 2015, most of you are familiar with. There were several things that came from that, but one of them was that we could work getting an inmate an ID or driver's license 180 day, 120 days prior to being released. Brand new process, took us all till the January 1, 2016 is when it went into effect. So uh, ADC actually prints their own driver's license identification, they do their own vision test. ACC physically takes the people to the DMV once we know what they're gonna get, we take their money and we take them to get their identification. So an ID card is issued to an eligible inmate who has either had one or has had one of the other suspended or revoked and a driver's license is eligible who has previously been issued a driver's license if it's not suspended or revoked or solely as a reason for a reinstatement fee. They qualify for either or. The reinstatement fees for a placement ID card should be waived for an eligible inmate if their fines and fees get paid in full. $10 reinstatement fee for a driver's license not expired, $40 if they had to get a new one that is expired. Now this is taken out of their inmate account or we pay for it up front if they want it and they sign for it, and it's taken out of their gate check when they're released. For any one period of eligibility, only the following two options are available, a driver's license or an ID card. If they come out with neither, oh, let, let me just go ahead first. Hey, Carrie, can, on can that we get a copy of your slides? Well, I'll ask for that because it's not mine. Okay. But uh, this is what we put together to train our staff on kind of how we do it, but I will ask, and if, if they're good with it, then I'll be glad to give it to you. This is what our research and planning staff does to determine the eligibility. We do a, we have EOMIS, which is our uh, electronic offender management system, and we share it with ADC. We have the same system, we see the same data on an inmate. Once they're put on probation or parole, all their history's in there, their demographics and everything. We prepare a file, and it's submitted over to ODS, Offender uh, Officer Driver Services. They get that data, and they process it based on four identifiers. There's uh, their last name, social security number, driver's license or an ID card, or a date of birth. Three of those four have to match. Or they come up showing that they've had an ID or a driver's license before. If three of those four match, they send an export file back that says this person is eligible for an ID or this person is eligible for a driver's license. If they're eligible for one or the other, they'll tell what they have to do to meet that need. And then our staff, which Ms. Bernard in the back, she works through this every day. You work individually with an inmate. Once we get that data file back, we sit down with them and we tell them, you owe fines, fees out of this court. You can get your identification card, it's free. Or if you pay for it, that waiver is gonna stay on there until the 180 days are up. Or you can get it for free, which it's gonna take that waiver off if you get it for free. Or if you qualify for a driver's license, this is what you gotta do to get it back. We coordinate it, we travel, we take them over and we get whatever they are qualified for. We use the DFNA websites in order to check their drive, their travel, 
traffic violations. That will determine who's suspended. Let me let you look at it. This is the information we put in if we have it. And we get a report back that looks like this. If you've ever run anything in ACIC, you've probably seen a traffic report. And basically, this tells us when their convictions were and all of their suspensions and the county that it's suspended out of and why. So we have to try to work through this. And ACC counselors and volunteers that do work with inside, they try to call these courts and make arrangements too. Now, if it has, let me go to the next page. And I know this is confusing y'all because it is for me. There, let me see. Maybe it says it on here, what I can tell you. Because if there's an end date, it says that that uh, suspension has been lifted or satisfied by that court. I'm just gonna tell you wrong. But does everybody understand what we're looking at here? This was when it was suspended for indefinite based on them paying this out of this county. So it gives us, tells us who to contact to try to get that worked out before they get released. Let's see. We try to verify it. If they can get an ID only, if they have no driver's license, their ID is not expired, and their fee can be waived for a duplicate car. The driver's license has expired. It costs $40, and it will tell us that right here. This is what we're looking at. Driver's license has not expired. It only cost them $10 to get a replacement. To check for future dates, like between, these dates are already passed, so they may obtain a license if all of these other requirements are met first. And then here, two dates are in the past. However, the future date is shown, which means they cannot get it, which is gonna be like a future date here. They can't get it until after that date, which means that court fine or fee has not been satisfied for that suspension for the reinstatement. This determines which courts require suspension release. A release of suspension is required by the DFNA for these courts, right here. And if a date is shown, the suspension has already been cleared by that court, it's been satisfied, but it's not gonna come off the record. So you can see sometimes where this gets confusing and when you're trying to train staff to understand what this is and how they're reading it, if they call the courts, a lot of times the court will say, they can identify that's been taken care of, so we just come take that off the record. And then how to interpret it, like this is alcohol related, multiple actions are required to take care of that one on an FTA or a reinstatement fee. And I'm trying to buzz through this because I know I don't have much time. This is some of the things that we see on their driver's record that we have to try to take care of, like a, it'll be a, like a letter of explanation, and it's gonna have these on there and tell them this is, it's a failure to process child support, you must contact child support enforcement, and they go over that with the inmate. And this is their driver's license eligibility requirements. If they have to have that, an interlock device, they can't get it while they're incarcerated. The victim impact panel, they can if it's offered in the unit that they're in. A rehab certification, we have substance abuse program leaders inside and outside that they can work with them on this. And then for a safety responsibility and child support, uh, we try to call the child support offices. They don't work real friendly. Um, sometimes we can get it set to where if we have the inmates sign an agreement to start a payment within 30 days of release, they'll go ahead and release that suspension. And some of them, they want them to appear in court before the judge and actually comment that they will take care of that. This is if they want to pay a reinstatement fee pay service. That's just what that looks like. And it tells how much and tells them how to do it. And that's just kind of. But this is what our staff gets at the beginning of each month. There's a master copy placed on our in-state agency access. And they can pull that report off. And they use that to go by everybody that's within 120 days of being released and to sit down with them individually and try to explain where they're at with an ID or a driver's license. So like the report would look like. This offender right here, and he, well, let's just go up here. It says, you must furnish the officer driver control with a release of suspension from the following courts. They try to call the courts on ACC side. Now, granted, I'm, most of you probably know I'm from Arkansas Community Correction, so I don't know exactly how it's handled on the inside with the other 17,000, but I'm sure it's quite complicated. But that's basically what we do is we sit down and we go through this with them, talk to them, and try to call the courts to see if we can get some of that taken care of before they get out. And then that's just where we keep our master file and how our staff how our staff utilizes that. That was a quick and dirty of how we train our staff on the process. It's very it's very lengthy, but um, like I said, 120 Act 895 gave us 120 days before release. We send the export file over to the Office of Driver Services. 
They have their program in place and their protocol. They'll run it based on those four identifiers and they have to match three. They send the report back and then we start working with the inmate on what you can get or can't get. Um, now there's a couple things that will affect that right off the front and that's EPA. That's the Early Emergency Powers Act. If someone gets released in the 90 day or the one year, they may not, not have ever came within this 120 days of eligibility to get their driver's license or their ID. Chances are they're gonna get released without anything. It may not have even been talked about it because when the EPA at a year gets, they probably have not even been talked to about their driver's license or the ID. So that's two things that may affect them just right off the top. Um, then in, so we've seen a lot of these issues where people were coming out. Let me explain the 120 days. In the act, it says that that reinstatement fee waiver is good for 180 days. So we run it at 120. If they spend 120 days incarcerated, they've got 60 left on that 180 where that reentry flag is still on their driver's license or whatever, on their ID. If they get out at 150, they've only got 30 days, which means they only have 30 days left to either get an ID card or pay their fines and court fees and get their driver's license. That may or may not be an education issue on some of the inmates. Um, it's a little bit confusing and you can tell them that, but coming out the door, it's like, whoa, they're free. They don't, they don't even think past that one minute in the next 30 days or 60 days and then they're going, I need to get, because we get calls and they've been out four or five or six months going, well, I went in and the flag they say is not on my file. Well, you only had 30 days when you got out to get it. So Act 1012 was passed in 2017, which gave us permission to issue a restricted driving permit and basically said that anybody that's on probation or parole and their license is not suspended or revoked for child support or uh, driving like a DWI, anything that had to do that Matt is involved in. If it was not suspended or revoked for that reason and they are complying with their probation and parole, we could go into the DMV portal, put in their previous driver's license, date of birth, name or whatever, and it would submit over to the driver services and then they would submit something back saying yes, he can have a permit. We can print the permit and we print a letter of explanation that tells them you owe this many fines, fees, where you got to do this interlocking device and you've got to take this class and that class and we give it to them. And as long as they're doing everything they're supposed to do and they have these two pieces of paper with them, they get stopped, they can show this and it's legal. What, what's now, that act number? 1012. It was in 2017, it went to effect July 31st, 2017. Does that letter automatically print with the provisional license? Is that part of the provisional or the it restricted? Will, Does it come with, with it or is that something that they have to ask for as well? No, it should come with their permit. Now, I don't work in field services. Sure. Um, so I don't, I've not walked through a process with somebody on probation and parole and you would basically have to physically have them with you to be able to ask for it. Um, but yes, it's supposed to come with that and the letter of explanation as to how they can get that way. Now, say they're on probation for the next two years and they're working, they're paying their fine space, going to group, taking their kids to school, they can keep that permit and work toward paying off everything that's holding up their driver's license. And if they do that, before the end of their sentence, they can get their driver's license or their ID back. If their sentence runs out and they had so many obligations that they couldn't take care of before then, and they're off paper, probation's flat or their parole is over, that restricted permit is withdrawn. They can't keep it past the time that they're on supervision, so that's withdrawn. So we encourage and some of those who get one and only have six months, a lot of times they don't have time to get it all, but we encourage and we try to help them do the best we can to get everything taken care of. Um, so that's only good, and it can be revoked if they get in trouble. But it's about the whole time that they're on, uh, pay, uh, while they're on probation or parole? As long as they don't get any trouble, you know, get sent back or they fail a bunch of drug tests or something, because we can revoke that if they're not, you know, if they're not doing the conditions like they're supposed to be doing it. Say they get points for, uh, they get behind on their prob their probation fees, like their $35 a month. Will that re automatically revoke mm -hmm. it? No. no, it should not. Okay. We have not ever sentenced anybody to even to go back to SSP for just not paying. Okay. I mean, it's a combination of several different things. Okay. So if we send them back to SSP, which is our supervision sanction program, we will revoke that permit until they come back and we'll give them another opportunity to get it again. 
I just didn't know if they got behind on their probation fees because they've got to be up to date with everything in order for them to get the provisional license, correct? Well, or they've got to be working toward making toward a good it. faith effort. I mean, we, I mean, there's several things that they're going to be working toward, and as long as they're making that good faith effort and getting there, we're not going to take that permit away. Well, I say we. I'm speaking for the agency, but it may happen in some instances, so I can't speak for you know for all thousand employees that we have. But um, where was I going with that thought? Sorry. Anyway, that's where they get their permit. Well, we've seen that that wasn't <coughs> probably, it wasn't happening very often. And I know a lot of times that the, the probation or probably will come in and say, well, my officer said, I asked them, and they said they didn't know how, or they didn't know anything about it, or go here, or go there. I can assure you they've all been trained. But I cannot assure you that they're all doing it when they're asked to do it. Um, so that part, I apologize for on the front end, but I do know it is a little time consuming. Um, so, with that being said, we're like, okay, we got to try something different. So, we had another legislation which will go into effect July 1st. This is probably my favorite of all, is Act 69. Um, it will allow us to get a restricted permit before someone gets out of incarceration. Woo! So, instead of trying to do it when they're already on supervision, and a lot of times they don't really even ask for it or they won't ask for it, but um, this will give us opportunity and ADC. To request that restricted permit if, if before they even get out of the incarceration. Wait, did you say that'll be in effect? I'm sorry. Do what? July 1st. Mm -hmm. Also, another part of this, which is great, you know, 895 gave us 120 days for release up to a total of 180. Mm -hmm. Well, this will start 180 days on the date of release. So now, when this act goes into effect, they will have 180 days from the date of discharge from ADC or ACC to work off those fines and court costs to get their driver's license back. So weren't instead, those just signed this week? Huh? The, those were just signed this week, weren't they? Yes. So. 69, I think, was signed last week. But yeah, I just got a copy of it. And I'm like,